Hey, what's up? It's your chic mortgage millennial, Allison McCartan, coming to you with another video about home buying. Today, I just wanted to come to you really quickly just to say hi because I haven't done a video in maybe like two weeks. I've been so busy. Things are booming. Business is booming. People are buying houses. So that's good. You want your lender to be very busy because it's buying season. It's the summer. We all are busy. So if your loan officer, loan originator is not busy right now, then go ahead and give him some business. Tell him Allison sent you. Um, but on a serious note, I wanted to just come to you all to talk. And a lot of times I say buying a house is a lifestyle change. And many people may wonder why. Like, why does she always say buying a house is a lifestyle change? Because literally it takes blood, sweat, and tears to become a home owner. Think about it. Some people may come from a silver spoon, as they say, and just have all of the tools to be successful in life. But many of us do not. And with all this going on in today's society, I mean, do I really need to say it? You know, we just need to make sure that we support each other and do what we all need to do to be successful in life. There may be situations where you don't have the credit and you don't have the income or your debt to income ratio is too high. You have too much student loan debt and you don't qualify for a house. So whenever you are overcoming these obstacles and you finally become a homeowner, that's a lifestyle change. You had to readjust. You had to make changes that, you know, are very hard to go through. So I don't think that people should take it lightly when they buy a house. That housewarming that you're doing, you need to be excited. It's a lifestyle change. You just bought your first house. I always say buying a house is a lifestyle change. Becoming a homeowner is a lifestyle change because of what I see many people go through, because of what I had to go through to become a home buyer. One of the things that I went through personally, I had to fix my credit. Um, I didn't, I wasn't born with great credit, right? Because when I was younger, let me think of some of the debt that I had. I had collections that, I mean, I just really, I guess you're just born with collections. I don't know. One day I was um, working at the bank. I was working at Wells Fargo and I decided, okay, I'm tired of renting. I was in a one bedroom apartment. I love my apartment. But once you start looking at, you know, the prices of two bedroom apartments and three bedroom apartments, I did not have any kids um, at that time. I didn't have kids at the time. So it was really just me. But when you just want more space, have you seen the prices in Atlanta? I mean, you might as well buy a house. And that's how I felt. I said, you know what? My mom, she's been in the mortgage industry my entire life. What am I renting for? Like, she's right here. Finally, I just sat down and I pulled up my credit, annualcreditreport.com. That's a place where you can go to get your credit report from all three credit bureaus for free once a year. And I knew that by working at the bank because that's where I would tell people to go whenever they were um, denied for a loan or for a credit card, annualcreditreport.com. I'm in finance already. I know the tools. Let me pull it up. I pulled it up. My, most of my collections were minor. Like I had a um, Wells Fargo credit card, college credit card. Did anybody get hooked up with the college credit cards? And it was... It's so funny. So now I'm educated. So I know what mistakes not to make, but several of us do not know. I remember when I was in college one day and um, it wasn't even my banker because I just walked in the bank and they were like, hey, you know, you can get a college credit card. It's showing that you've already, you're already approved. All you have to do is accept the offer. And I'm just like, say what? How does this credit card work? I mean, they were just like, hey, make sure, just make the minimum payment. You know, as long as you make your minimum payments, you're good. And I'm just like, are you serious? That's so cool. So I got the credit card. I can't remember what my limit was initially, but let's just say it was like 300 to $500. I was making my payments. I would buy something, be like, oh, I want this. Let me buy this. 
hey, I'm a broke college student, let me buy this. Buying all this stuff and then I noticed that as I bought more, they would give me more money to spend. They would increase my limit, which is what credit card companies do. The more you pay on time, hey, spend some more money. We make money when we put you in debt. That's how we get trapped. Let's just be honest. My limit started to become my balance, if you understand. Um, it was just high, it was just too much. So guess what I did? I stopped paying it because I can't keep paying all this money. I can't even use the card no more. My credit card is maxed out. So why am I still paying for this? Nobody explained to me credit. That was one of the things that I had to clear up in order to become a homeowner because I just didn't know. And that was probably my biggest debt. Oh, the other one. After I graduated college, anybody heard of care credit? Is, is that what? I think it's called care credit. Basically, I had a dog. It was a little cute little dog and the dog got sick. So I took the dog to the vet. And they told me, hey, you know, if you don't have money for this pet visit or I think my dog needed surgery or something, and I love the dog so much that I got the dog the surgery, they said, you can apply for this care credit card and you can just pay it off over time. They didn't tell me the interest rate was like 500%. It was like 500%, guys, like. We were not educated about interest rates and about, hey, if you spend this amount and the interest rate is $1 million, you're going to pay a lot of money. Didn't know that. So I didn't understand, like, why am I paying this off and the balance is just getting higher and higher? This is stupid. I'm not paying this anymore. You see the trend here? So that was my credit life. And... I think that might be the main thing. I think maybe I had like what, a cell phone, just small stuff. And a lot of times when I tell millennials, I'm like, you know, they'll say my credit is just messed up. I'm like, look, it's just the millennial starter kit, but you don't have major issues. Like people have asked me, hey, should I file for bankruptcy? I'm like, let me see. Girl, you have under $5,000 debt. Like if you don't pay this off, if you don't try to do a settlement, if you don't do the work that it takes to get this taken care of you don't have a lot of debt like now that i'm in finance i've seen people with situations like Doop, my computer blows up but i love all of, i love all of them i love all of y'all no judgment zone because i mean we all go through stuff and we're all educating ourselves we're all in this together but everyone has credit issues from people that have money to people who have very little money. When I say, again, buying a house, becoming a homeowner is a lifestyle change. It is because the moment that you decide that you want to buy a house, it is very seldom that you can just wake up and say, you know what, I'm gonna buy a house without putting in some type of work. You have to put in the work in order to qualify, change your life. You can't do what you wanted to do. Which, well, you can't do what you've already done because you'll keep getting the same results. I had to adjust my mindset. I can't just say, hey, this is how I'm gonna use credit cards because nobody told me. I'm just gonna pay the minimum, the balance is gonna keep on getting higher, and then when I can't spend anymore, I'm just gonna stop paying it because what's the point? That is a mindset that I, my uneducated uneduc self, that was the mindset of my uneducated self. So once you educate yourself, you have to make the adjustments and you have to change your lifestyle. I wanted to come to you all. I'm not going to keep you for long, but I wanted to talk to y'all today about mortgage stuff and to share my story on why I say becoming a homeowner is a lifestyle change because I know I work with several different people and we have to make adjustments when we decide to become a homeowner. So why not celebrate it like we do when somebody loses 100 pounds or when somebody loses 40 pounds or when someone starts their own business you just bought a house clap it up that's a very major lifestyle change so make sure that you follow me on social media you can follow me at chic mortgage millennial and 
like and subscribe on this YouTube. And I'll be back with another mortgage video. Until then, until next time, I will see you all later. Bye.